the weather is getting colder so I thought it might be a good time to talk about how I stay warm on the boat over the winter. This video is not really going to be about heating systems. I will talk a little bit about electric heaters at the end. I am on shore power at the moment. I'm not going to go into off-grid heating systems. Um, there's quite a few videos by other YouTubers that go into that so if that's what you're looking for then um, <laughs> here might not be the place. But what this is going to be about is if you have limited means and you can't afford to run your heater flat out all the time and you need some other ways to stay warm then hopefully some of this advice might be useful to you. A lot of these tips also will just generally be useful to anyone who needs to save money on their heating bill whether you're on a boat or not. So the first tip which is probably a little bit obvious, heating yourself is more efficient than heating the entire boat. So with that in mind the first thing to consider is obviously clothing. So I thought I would show you um, some of the clothes that I typically wear. So I really love thermal leggings. You can wear these either as sort of a layer on their own or underneath something else and if you're a man and you don't want to go around sort of <laughs> wearing leggings you can still wear something similar to this or sort of under your jeans or whatever you can see they are very fluffy inside um, i find that it's a lot warmer to wear these than just to wear something like jeans on their own and this year for the first time i have bought some of these thermal tops they have a high neck so I find that my neck gets really cold sometimes when I'm just sitting around and this obviously is designed to go underneath um, whatever other shirt you might be wearing. Thermal socks as well have a nice fluffy layer inside. I've worn these so much that they're actually getting holy so <laughs> maybe time for some new ones. Nice warm jumpers are also really nice to have over the top of all of your other layers. Um, this one is my favourite. I've had it for many years. Um, some might say it's hideous but I... <laughs> I still really love it, it's the warmest one I've ever owned, I don't know what it is, I think it's just something about this type of fabric, I don't know, but also again it has a high neck. And then if I'm still cold with all of those layers on, then that's when I bring out my trusty dressing gown, which I've had for well over 10 years at this point. It's starting to look a bit questionable in places, but it is so warm and I cannot stress enough what a difference this will make to how warm you are to put this over the top of your clothes. It just really does a good job of keeping all the heat in. It's so warm. Um, it's made of this lovely fluffy material. And then for your feet, um, if your thermal socks are not warm enough. Last Christmas my mum kindly got me these lovely <laughs> fluffy slippers. The floor tends to get very cold so this um, helps to keep the chill off. Another thing I've been considering this year is because the floor does get so cold, sorry I should call it the, the cabin sole, last time I called it a floor somebody left a very pedantic comment on my video telling me that I was using the wrong terminology so um, because the cabin sole gets so cold I've been thinking about maybe finding some off cuts of carpet from somewhere and sort of cutting them to shape and just sort of loosely putting them down on the floor kind of like a rug. I do work at a computer so during the day I will be sitting down and I do tend to get very chilly um, so a couple more things I do when I'm sitting to stay warm is a nice big blanket and um, just put this over my legs and also I have these fingerless gloves. I find that when I'm typing my hands get really chilly so I put these on. It probably looks a little bit ridiculous but um, stops my hands getting too cold. Um, they're a little bit Dennis the Menace aren't they? <laughs> so apart from wearing a lot of warm clothes another really good way to sort of heat yourself up from the inside is to have a lot of hot food and drink. Probably sounds obvious but I find that having a nice cup of tea will just do so much to warm me up and it keeps you feeling warm for a while afterwards as well. And the same with food, you know, if you have a choice between sort of a sandwich and a bowl of soup then the, the soup is going to keep you a lot warmer. If you are lucky enough to be at a marina where you have access to hot showers, take advantage of them. In the vast majority of marinas you're not paying extra for showers, so <laughs> that's included in what you're paying, so you know, take advantage of it. And I find as soon as I come out of the shower I want to sort of pile on my warm layers and I might feel a bit too hot at first but it, it helps to keep the heat in and <laughs> stop it all from escaping. Another really important way of staying warm is to keep moving around. 
I know for me it's often the last thing I feel like doing when it's really cold outside. I don't want to move, I want to just stay under my pile of blankets. But obviously uh, moving around gets your circulation going which makes you warmer. I think it might be a good thing that I'm in the yard at the moment because it gives me a reason to sort of go outside and move around and warm up a bit. The DIY of any kind is a good way of staying warm. Chores obviously, you know, trivial stuff like cleaning. If you think of it as a free source of heat maybe um, the chores start to seem a little bit more appealing. <laughs> if you don't have any particular chores or anything that need doing, you know, just go out for a walk, walk to the shop. Any time that you're sort of outside moving around is time that you're not sitting inside having to <laughs> spend lots of money on heating. I also really like to do yoga. I just about have enough space in the boat to put a yoga mat down and do some stretching if I do a sort of more energetic yoga video well, obviously there's pretty much unlimited free yoga videos on the internet these days and um, sort of half an hour of that will really warm me up So all of this stuff can massively reduce how much you need to run your heating but realistically on a chilly winter's day you're not going to be able to eliminate heating completely. Many people talk about insulation and it is a good idea. Um, personally my experience has been on a small sailing boat you just don't have enough space to put in an adequate amount of insulation to actually make a difference. I have in places put a thin layer of foam, some, some camping mats that were just sort of cut up and glued against the hull. The main purpose of that though was just to prevent condensation. Um, in some areas, for example above where my clothes are, it was just bare fiberglass and I used to get condensation dripping down onto my clothes and then they would go kind of manky and it was really gross. So the insulation has been useful for that but I don't think it makes any real difference to the actual temperature of the boat. In for example a narrow boat I think it is a lot different. You do have a lot more space to work with and you can put a thicker layer of insulation. So in terms of electric heaters I used to have a little fan heater. I do. I still do have it somewhere actually but I never found that it made the boat very warm and I started doing some research into heaters. What I learned was a fan heater what it's doing is it's heating up the air. Unfortunately my boat is pretty drafty I don't know about anyone else's. If I heat up the air what happens is the air just blows away out of the boat. <laughs> the nice warm air is gone and it's getting replaced by cold air. And some people might say well you know you need to block all the drafts and everything um, but I don't really want to close off all my vents and things because having that air flowing through is actually very beneficial for keeping mould at bay. What I found by doing my reading is that other types of heaters produce a different kind of heat. Radiant heat which is what's produced by the sun that doesn't heat up the air, it heats up whatever it's pointing at, so hopefully what it's pointing at is you. <laughs> I found that halogen heaters produce mostly or maybe entirely radiant heat, I'm not sure, and I found one very affordably from Screwfix, so I've bought that and I haven't had to use it much yet because actually it's been very mild for the time of year, but I did test it and you definitely feel the difference when it's pointing at you, you feel a lot of heat coming off it even when it's on the low setting. The low setting is only 500 watts. Fan heat the low setting was 750 watts so you didn't feel anything like as warm. Because you feel warmer with less actual heat that is going to reduce your electricity bill. Um, if you're spending a lot of time aboard any time of year I think you really do need a dehumidifier. Ideally it's got to be a desiccant dehumidifier. The condenser types don't really work very well below 18 degrees and realistically it is probably quite often going to be below 18 degrees in your boat. I have a dehumidifier. I find that it works really well and the thing with desiccant dehumidifiers is they also produce heat. So if it's not really quite cold enough to run the heater then sometimes what I'll do is to just run the dehumidifier on a low setting. Um, it produces enough heat to take the chill off the air. At the same time it's drying out the air and the good thing about that is when the air is drier then it feels warmer. Again it's not necessarily much of a lasting effect because as I was saying <laughs> my boat is a bit drafty so you dry out the air and then an hour later the, <laughs> the air has changed and so <laughs> you've got damp air again but it's useful for example if you've just cooked and you've got condensation dripping off everything and then you can run the dehumidifier for an hour to get rid of the condensation. One thing I have been considering is that when you wake up in the morning it can be very cold. I don't 
typically run any heating overnight unless it's really really chilly so that often means when i wake up in the morning the temperature inside the boat is not that different to the temperature outside so on a cold winter's day it's really cold inside and that can make it very difficult to get out of bed so i've been considering maybe getting some remote switches so that i can turn the heater on from the comfort of my bed and then <laughs> it might be a little bit easier to get out of bed if the heating has been on for half an hour beforehand <laughs> So finally, I just wanted to talk about staying warm in bed. So to start with, I have this really, really thick duvet. I actually use it all year round because it never gets like all that warm <laughs> on the boat. So if it's really chilly, I'll get the, the blanket that I showed you before and put it on top. I also have a nice fluffy hot water bottle to use on chilly nights. I have these amazingly fluffy pyjamas. Um, another present from my mum last Christmas. Um, they've been really, really good. I'll wear some fluffy socks quite often. I find my feet get really cold. I don't know what it is, but down the end of the bed, I think there's some kind of draft. And that one really might be worth blocking off because I hate having cold feet. And then if it's really cold, I find my head just seems to get cold. So I, I'll sometimes wear a hat um it's not that effective because it tends to fall off halfway through the night um but <laughs> if it helps me fall asleep <laughs> i guess it does the job finally i have an electric under blanket so it goes underneath the sheet it's very low power um then i'll put it on setting number three to warm up the bed about half an hour before i get into bed um and it does a really good job making it nice and toasty and then what you can do if it's really cold is sort of turn it down to the lowest setting and actually leave it on all night and it uses very very little power and it does make a difference. I installed a dedicated socket for it here so that I don't have to run extension leads in from the saloon. <laughs> when it's really cold I have also been known to sleep here on this city <laughs> in the saloon. Um, the reason being, well firstly it tends to be less drafty sort of in the middle of the boat but also I've been heating the saloon all day so there's a lot of heat that kind of gets retained. That's it for this video, I hope you found it um, useful in some way and I'll see you next time.